everyone at Supergiant Games. My name is Harrison Crooks from Vault and Props, and this is a short video on how to operate your transistor. Hello, world. Okay, so this is easily the most boring part of the process, but you're going to need a place to put the sword once it's out of the packaging. So, first step, assemble your display base. There are two bolts, two nuts, four washers. These two legs right here will be shipped separately, so they will not be attached. Bolt those guys on here, pretty much ready to go. This does have some adjustable feet on the bottom, so on the off chance that your segment of the convention center floor is not perfectly level, uh, like my shop floor, you can adjust them as needed, make sure that this thing is upright and perfect. So once this is assembled, go ahead and take the sword out of the case, and you can put it in. It's also a good idea to go ahead and route your audio and power cables underneath the display stand right now. Um, you're going to hook those up, they go in the bottom of the sword, and it uh, makes it a lot easier to put them in place if they're already sitting here, so you don't have to fumble around underneath the blade while it's hanging on the stand. These are your connections on the bottom of the sword, audio input, audio output, and wall power. Make sure that these are always correct. Um, reversing this and running input into the output or vice versa can damage the circuitry inside, so be absolutely certain whenever you're plugging in, triple check things just to keep the electric safe. All right, with the base assembled, you are ready to put this in its stand. When picking the sword up, try to avoid uh, just lifting it by the handle or just lifting it by one end. Always try to support it from two places if possible. There is a steel bar in here that runs from here all the way to here. So it is very structurally sound, but it is also quite heavy and a little cumbersome to pick up. Uh, after all, it is a five foot tall sword. So best thing to do is always pick it up by two points, like so, carry it like this. Um, and uh, that's, yeah, best practice. All right, installing the sword into the base. Uh, once you have it and you're carrying it around, it is okay to just hold it by the handle like this. It weighs about 15 pounds, so you're gonna get sick of that pretty quickly, but it is safe. To put it into the base, simply guide the pins on the lower section of the sword into this area in between these two posts, and then rock the handle back into the cradle up top here. Now, you can leave the sword like this just fine. It will not go anywhere. Those pins will hold the uh, front of the sword from folding forward. But I've also got this little catch strap here. So to secure it, because it is going to be a crowded convention floor, people are going to be bumping into it, that sort of thing. We wrap this around the handle here and secure it on the back side on that nut. Now, your sword is nice and stable. So even if somebody knocks into it pretty severely, it's not going anywhere. All right, I know everybody's really excited to turn the thing on, but let's walk through a few more things before that happens. So before the power is connected down there at the pins, uh, at the bottom of the sword, you need to make sure that everything is set inside here. This is your access hatch, and you'll see two little indentations right there. You can fit your fingernails in. This is held on magnetically, so just pop up the front like that, pull it away. Inside here, you've got this sheet. Uh, that covers all of the electrics, the wiring. Don't go in there, nothing you need to look at. Uh, the other things that you're gonna see in here are going to be this little guy here, which is your battery pack, which is not necessary if you are planning on running it on wall power for a while, but that is an option. And then you've got two things that you need to interact with. There's a switch right here and a switch right here. Once you get up pretty close in here, you're gonna see that this big switch right there is labeled AC battery. This big switch right here is labeled on off. Biggest thing to uh, make sure is that before you plug anything in, whether it be the battery pack over here, uh, up that way, or powering up the input pin for the wall power down below, make sure that this is switched to the zero or off position. You don't want to plug anything in while the sword is on. So if you guys would like to operate the sword on battery power, uh, that's pretty simple. Take your lithium polymer battery right here. I gave you guys two of these, so you should have enough. That will run the sword for about an hour. Uh, it's a little power hungry. Flip up the cover plate here for the electronics. Plug the battery into this little pigtail. There's only one way it can be connected, so don't worry about getting it backwards. And then tuck the battery up into this area there. Now, uh, make sure the power is turned off whenever you do this. You don't want to swap the battery out, change power supplies or anything while the sword is on. It's a good idea to go ahead and cycle the power once, and then we're on, and away we go. Okay, power brick is plugged into the base of the sword. There's also an audio input line 
make sure that that is tied into whatever it is you're going to be playing audio with. Otherwise, the wire will act as basically an antenna and you'll get a lot of nasty hum out of it. So if you have an input line plugged in, make sure that it's plugged in elsewhere at a source. Uh, power is off, and so we are ready to hit the button. So power on. Get a little pop out of the speakers. That's perfectly normal. And nothing happens, but that's intentional. Everything on the transistor is controlled via this little function remote, A, B, C, and D buttons. The A button will turn things on and off. C button will change between the red and green states of the sword. Those animations are a little bit long, so make sure to wait for them to uh, finish completely before going on. The B button here plays sound effects. Green and red sound effects are different, and you don't have to change or hit a different button. The sword knows which mode it's in, and it will play each one accordingly. And then the D button there plays sound effects from the game, so combat sounds, motorcycle sounds, all that kind of fun stuff. So A button to turn everything on. And B button to say a few lines. Hello, world. Hey, Red. What's up? C button to change into red state. So you'll see the eye and the green go dim. Fade back into red. The eye fades back in. And then we get red state and a spoken hey. line. Oh. And then when you hit the B button again, oh boy. you get different dialogue. Something's got an end. Everybody. Everybody. And to go back to green state, just hit C again. And a bit more animation. Uh. Now we do have a line input for the sword. Uh, this is mainly um, programmed to work with human voice, uh, but you can play pretty much anything you want out of it. Uh, if you play music or something like that, there'll be a lot of blinking and it won't necessarily time up with the music perfectly. Uh, so it does work better with things that are more staccato. Um, however, we did find out that it works pretty well with the transistor soundtrack. Thank you guys for hiring me for this project. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope it's a hit at PAX. Could really go for some Junction Jans right now. Yeah, me too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>